The Aurora Borealis, otherwise known as the Northern Lights, are one of nature's most mesmerizing displays of power. Despite what its name suggests, the Northern Lights can be seen almost anywhere in the world, just as far south as the equator. The phenomenon has been witnessed in Honolulu and Singapore. However, sightings that far south are extremely rare. It's most commonly witnessed within the Arctic Circle. The South Pole also has its own version of the Aurora Borealis, called the Aurora Australis. And Earth isn't the only planet with auroras. You would witness a similar phenomenon if you were to stand on Jupiter or Saturn. Uranus has auroras too. But unlike the other planets with their wave-like displays, the auroras on Uranus appear as glowing dots. But what exactly causes these mysterious light shows? Let's find out. Some Inuit believe that the spirits of their ancestors can be seen dancing within the lights of the aurora. The Vikings believed that the aurora was a bridge of fire to the sky, forged by the gods. Well, spoiler alert, according to modern science, the northern and southern lights are not dancing spirits or a bridge of fire. They are actually caused by something much more tangible, the sun. Our sun is a 4.7 billion year old ball of hydrogen and other gases fusing away in space, 150 million kilometers away from planet Earth. And every once in a while, it kicks up a bit of a storm. A solar storm, to be precise. The sun produces energy by smashing hydrogen atoms together in its core under such immense temperatures and pressures that the hydrogen atoms fuse to form helium atoms. This process is known as nuclear fusion. When atoms are under these kinds of pressures, they turn into a mushy soup of freely moving particles, which is a fourth state of matter known as plasma. The sun is essentially a gigantic ball of swirling plasma. Using the process of nuclear fusion, the sun is able to turn small amounts of matter into enormous quantities of energy. It's how the sun has managed to keep producing energy for billions of years without running out of fuel. If humankind were able to consistently replicate nuclear fusion here on Earth, we would be able to make almost infinite amounts of energy using relatively few resources. In fact, if you could convert the mass of one bag of sugar into energy, it would be enough to drive a car non-stop for 100,000 years. All this plasma swirling around within the sun generates huge magnetic fields. These magnetic fields are under such immense pressures within the sun that sometimes the lines of force of these magnetic fields meet. When this happens, the magnetic field is forced outward toward the surface of the sun. Once it reaches the sun's surface, it ejects outward into space at great speeds, taking extremely hot gases and charged particles, also known as plasma, with it. This is known as a solar flare, and they can be witnessed on the sun's surface as a very bright spot followed by a cloud of gas. When a very large solar flare occurs containing a significantly huge amount of energy, it is referred to as a coronal mass ejection, or CME for short. The gas clouds produced by a CME can sometimes be larger than the sun itself. CMEs and solar flares don't stop just outside the sun's surface. Charged particles ejected from the sun continue to travel outward through space over enormous distances. After traveling through space for around two days, they will reach planet Earth. This is known as the solar wind, and it can be extremely dangerous. If the magnetic field released from a solar flare or CME were to hit planet Earth, it could cause the extinction of the human race. So why hasn't it? After all, solar flares are taking place regularly on the sun's surface. Well, the solar wind does actually hit Earth, often, but our trusty planet is well prepared. We have a defense system to protect us from the huge amounts of energy the sun bombards us with on a daily basis. Just like the sun, the Earth produces its own magnetic field. At the Earth's core lies a ball of solid iron. The heat of this iron turns the surrounding outer core into flowing liquid iron. The movement of this outer liquid core produces a magnetic field that, luckily for us, encompasses the Earth. If you could ask a scientist one question about the Northern Lights, what would it be? Share your curiosity with us. If you're learning something about our universe's wonders in today's episode so far, show your support by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and hitting the notification bell. The Earth's magnetic field acts as a protective barrier against all sorts of harsh, destructive forces that come from far away in space. 
including solar flares. This protective shield is called the Earth's magnetosphere, and it extends thousands of kilometers into space. That sounds large, but it's actually rather modest compared to Jupiter's magnetosphere, which extends over 7 million kilometers from space on each side of the planet. In fact, on Jupiter's night side, facing away from the Sun, its magnetic field even reaches Saturn. But let's get back to Earth. Most of the Sun's solar winds simply bounce off the Earth's magnetosphere when they reach us. However, the magnetosphere has two weak spots at the North and South Poles, where the magnetic fields that protect planet Earth are much less prevalent than near the equator. This means that a small percentage of the charged particles from the Sun do make their way into the Earth's atmosphere via these two weak spots at the poles. When this happens, the electrons in the solar wind collide with oxygen and nitrogen atoms in the Earth's atmosphere. During this interaction, energy is transferred from the atoms in the solar wind to the Earth's oxygen and nitrogen atoms, raising their energy states and exciting them. When an atom gets excited, its electrons move into an orbit further away from the nucleus. These newly excited atoms eventually release this newfound energy to calm themselves down and return to their baseline energy state. The oxygen and nitrogen atoms release this energy in the form of particles of light or photons. The light they emit is what we call the aurora. This process of exciting atoms to cause them to release energy in the form of light is exactly how neon lights work. The auroras are simply nature's neon lights, executed on a far grander scale. The only difference is that nature uses this phenomenon in a far subtler way than to advertise strip bars. The auroras typically appear in vast curtains or waves of light following a distinct line across the sky. They appear this way because they are following lines of force in the Earth's magnetic field. Yes, that's right. The aurora uses the force. The different colors of the aurora are caused by different gases in the atmosphere. Each gas emits a unique color when it is excited. For example, oxygen gives off a green light when it's excited, which is the most common color seen in the aurora. Nitrogen, on the other hand, gives off blue and red colors when excited. So, to summarize, when charged particles released from solar flares on the sun's surface hit our planet at either the North or South Pole, they interact with atoms in the Earth's atmosphere. This interaction causes electrons to move to a higher energy state. When these electrons drop back down to a lower energy state, they release photons, tiny particles of light that paint the night sky in a spectacular display of shimmering waves following the natural magnetic field lines of planet Earth. Understanding how auroras are formed might seem like it takes away some of their magic, but there's a deeper beauty in comprehending the science behind one of nature's most breathtaking performances. So if you're ever lucky enough to experience the aurora for yourself, take a moment to contemplate just how marvelous and magnificent the universe really is, and then take some epic selfies to capture the moment forever. Do you have any personal stories or folklore related to the Northern Lights from your culture or region? Share them with us! We hope you are inspired to learn more about the Northern Lights. If you enjoyed this exploration, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to Trail Trove, and ring the notification bell. Your interactions fuel our passion for science and discovery, and helps us bring you more educational content. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.